I will be monitoring your, um, your questions. So let's go ahead and get started. So as I said, the name of the video is <clears throat> Hidden Color, See It, Paint It. This is the setup, uh, this uh, setup for my still life. It's a standard, fairly standard still life, except for one, um, one thing. It's those colored blocks that I have in there. And I put those in there because I needed those to show you exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about hidden color. Let me get my chat window up there. There it is. Okay. Yeah, I got my chat window. <laughs> it wasn't up there. Now it is. So um, this is the setup, and I've also got um, a, a pencil sketch that I laid in the, um, the scene with, and I call this stage one blocking in. And as you can see, I'm putting in some, some color for the background. And uh, what I want to do with this color in this stage, this block in stage, and you could call it, you could call it a local color block in, uh, is I just want to mix a color and use a color that is an average color and average value for that mass. And in this case, it's the mass in the background or the or the, the purple coloring. And um, so the way I arrive at this kind of average mass, average color value is I would think of it as taking that whole section back there and just throwing it into a mixing bowl and mixing it up, making an average, average color, average value with that. I'm not looking for nuances right now. I'm looking for just plain, very understated uh, shapes and colors. So at this point, I've sped it up to about eight times in, in, in speed. And if you need to slow that down later on YouTube, where this will be posted, you can choose to slow this down if you want to see it uh, at real time. But if I speed it up, it we'll get through it. So again, I'm going for an average color in the shadow of this, uh, this vase uh, for the pansies. It's not nuanced. I don't have any kind of, uh, any kind of details in there. And I'm also using the same color in the, in the shadow for the cups and the little blocks. I'm only adding little touches where I think it would help me make a decision about uh, the colors that I add later on. But I'm still just trying to keep it very simple. So uh, at this point, again, I'm, I'm looking for uh, an average color, average value, and I'm making slight changes uh, in the greenery there, just because I, I want to save myself some time later going back in. Uh, I want to make sure that I've separated the lights and the shadows uh, from the start. And now I'm painting the, the pansies, uh, adding some local color for those. And if you missed it, local color is just the the average color uh, um, has very little influence. Uh, in other words, there's very little, there's not let, a lot of color being influenced by the local color. It's just the color of the pansy without any kind of other influences going on. So I'm putting it in and uh, just going to fill it in with, uh, you know, some shadow and light colors there keeping the color fairly thin at this point uh, if i need to put thicker color in i'll do that right away but usually it's it's more thin
just add in a few little details. Not a lot. I don't want to get carried away with details at this point. That would be kind of a mistake. Okay, so now I'm going to fill in a little bit of color for the uh, the little yellow block there. And shadow side. I usually work from the shadow side to the light. Filling in some spaces, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, some lights and shadows there. And then I'm going to move on to, uh, well, let's get this the red one in there. So I fill in the light side of the red and the, and the top is just a little bit cooler. A little color in the um, white areas. I want to make sure that all of the areas are filled in, that I don't leave any white where I don't intentionally want to leave a bare spot. Uh, so... I'll fill it all in. Still working. Uh, put some color on the uh, the ground plane. Again, this is just an average color, average value for this block in, and it's really what it is for me. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is a block in, uh, kind of a lo as I said, it's a local color block in. Now, I'm going and I'm starting to um, shore up some of my decisions about the color uh, a little bit thicker. I'm a bit, a bit more confident about the purple now because I've got all of the rest of the colors in. I would, I would wait until um, I start to um, have all my coloring in before I start to make these secondary decisions about changing any values or colors that I have. So just trying to get it all patched in, all the little spots, before I go on to any other stage. Okay, still working it. A few details in the stems and things like that. I can put those in because, you know, it's, it's pretty much patched in. I'm not really going to play with edges at this point too much. Um, that's not my big concern. My big concern is getting it filled in with, uh, you know, good harmonies, uh, showing where the light's coming from. And especially, again, just with those average colors for all the masses. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and, uh, you know, type them into your, your the chat window and I'll be happy to answer those for you. Because we're almost ready. We're almost done with stage one. <clears throat> stage two take a little bit. I slowed it down a little bit longer. So this is the end of stage one. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, you can see it's very, just almost posterized. It's a very, very, um, I don't know, it's not, it's not nuanced at all. And I see a lot of, uh, you know, especially beginners, um, still lifes and paintings that look like this. And it's fine. That would be fine. Uh, for the most part, I think that that would be a great start. You can consider this, a, I think, a successful painting. But um, over the last uh, 15, 20 years, uh, I've learned to see color in a different way, uh, see color that I didn't see before. And so now I start to put those colors into my paintings because they are there. And I didn't see that before, which leads me to uh, the stage two reflected light and color. So here's my setup again. Uh, I've got the pansies in the pot and I've got these uh, colored blocks. Now, if we stop here and look, you'll see in the background, there is a, a heavy influence of that yellow block in the background, as well as the foreground. 
So if we zoom in and look at that, you'll even see that uh, this yellow block has a huge influence on how it's reflecting light, even on the background there. It's all around. It's influencing purple, even on the, the foreground plane right there. And in the shadow of the cloth, that yellow is really, really kind of throwing that color in there. Same for this red. This red block is throwing red light up into the shadow of that vase. You can see it as well as the cup, the yellow and the green block too. And mostly in the shadows is where you'll see that stuff. You can see the red and the yellow influence on that shadow side of the vase there. Now, just to demonstrate this even further, I'm going to uh, slide some colored paper behind this setup. And I want you to notice the shadow side of that vase that the pansies are in, how dramatically that changes, it goes to pink, there is a red. You can see that just lighting up as I put these color swatches back there. There's a green. I think there's a yellow next. The influence of this is just is really amazing to me. So um, let's see if I got here. I repeat the same demonstration. Look how red that that gets back there behind that uh, that color on the shadow side of that pot there. Here's a close-up of it to show you. And there's green, you can see that. And a yellow. So that's a dramatic demonstration, but I want you to see a subtle demonstration of how that affects everything in the scene, not just, not just what's close up. You can see that purple, the violet cloth in the background also start to change color as I am introducing these little swat, these paper, colored paper in there. You can see that. So let's, uh, we'll go back to the um, stage one block in. And now we can start with the, uh, the stage two, which will be the uh, reflect color that we were just looking at. So I'm not sure if anybody can uh, see this, uh, but <laughs> I'm the, uh, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in. I'll be happy to happy to answer that for you. So now I'm starting to add the influences of this coloring that uh, I just demonstrated in a kind of a dramatic way for you just a few seconds ago. Um, and you can judge for yourself just how it changes the feeling of the painting. Uh, from left to right. The left side is the stage one block in. And if you just kind of bounce back and forth between that block in, and what I'm doing now with the uh, adding these little color nuances, you'll see that. Yeah, that was done uh, a la prima. Uh, Randy uh, is asking, is stage number two wet into wet? Oh, I'm, no, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Stage one is... Uh, a la prima and stage two is it's a little bit drier it's a like a day or two drier it's still kind of tacky though a la prima is all at once a la, uh, uh, brandy lee asks uh, can you tell us what a la prima is it's just painting it all in the same session not letting it dry So I'm still um, adding some nuances and you can start to see how it's breaking things up a little bit. I'm not changing, I'm really not trying to change the values at all in those little spots. I'm only um, just nuancing temperature changes just a bit. So uh, as I go along here and add these colors, these, uh, these nuances to the different parts of the painting, I have to keep reminding myself that this really should be subtle. Um, these are not new colors I'm trying to add to the painting as much as just kind of 
extending the color that's already there um, it, towards the object that's influencing the mass. For instance, the yellow cube, I just painted a little bit of what may look like yellow in the black, in the purple area back there, but it's really more of a grayish color. Now I'm taking uh, advantage of um, this stage two to um, soften the edges of the, um, the vase there. I'm also kind of adding a little yellow color next to that pansy bloom because that too will influence the purple in the background. But it's all about subtlety. It's all about being very subtle about these changes. But it, it, it all in all, it brings life to, to it. Um, I think when it's done, you'll probably see that. I hope that uh, it has a better sense of uh, vitality to the color. And uh, let's see what Grindley, thank you. Also, is there a medium ad at this point or just straight oils? Actually, there's a, a, a little bit of linseed oil. Um, the uh, surface that I'm using is a, a kind of a very absorbent surface. Um, I just I just primed a, a masonite surface with uh, some of my uh, uh, Utrecht uh, professional gesso. And it gives me just what I want. Um, I'll use mediums uh, whenever I have to, uh, oils to make it a little bit more fluid, especially in the beginning, or even some uh, odorless mineral spirits to, to make it a little bit more fluid. But usually uh, just a little bit of oil will make it a little bit thinner. So I'm, I'm still just kind of softening edges here as I go. Um, I didn't need to do that in the, in the first stage. Uh, I needed, the first stage was all about getting uh, the critical colors in their harmonies orchestrated. Um, that being said, you know, there are a lot of routes to this. You can, you can, you can take a lot of different you can make this work in a lot of different ways. You could go, you could control your edges and your harmonies at the same time. This demonstration, I wanted you guys to see the difference between a, a, a um, local color block in and just how far you can take it by adding these extra, these extra colors, these colors that for some um, are kind of hard to see. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I didn't, I didn't really see these colors for probably the first 10 years of my painting. If I did, I just caught them by accident because I was painting, trying to paint exactly what I saw, you know. And then when I started to see these colors, it opened up a whole new way of painting for me because um, I now understand how they influence each other. So I'm adding just little uh, little touches here and there. And uh, at this point, uh, anything I add to it is, uh, is helping me to understand the next step for myself. So still adding a little bit of yellow in the background or what is perceived as yellow. They actually, the color I'm adding is a very, very gray violet. It's very gray violet and it looks like it's yellow. Um, because that's uh, one of the contrasts, uh, it's called a contrast of extension. It, it only looks yellow because it's surrounded by, it's nested in that large violet mass. But it's really, like I said, it's a really a gray violet. So still moving along. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a little bit of a <clears throat> hoarseness there. Uh, still moving along and uh, starting to tackle 
uh, different aspects of this reflected color. Working on edges here. In the background along the, uh, I guess it's an urn, I suppose. I call it a pot, but it's probably an urn. I'm going to blend this shape with the shadow here at first. I, I think in the end, I probably changed it again. But you can also see that I, I'm adding just a touch of purple in that gray shadow. But just along the edge, whoop, there you go, I'm mean, making it darker. But I got a little bit, a little bit more purple. And that's because the purple backdrop or the cloth is influencing that shadow. So I'm putting that in. And some of this, some of this might be glare. I'm not really trying to change the values at all. So if you see me change a looks what looks like a, a lighter color, it's probably glare from the lights. And now I'm coming in and I'm reinforcing the shadow shape that I had uh, on the urn or, or pot there. Uh, sometimes I'll put a thin color in. I may leave it thin or I may reinforce it. It depends on how confident I am with that, with that color. Have I made the right choice or not? Is it going to work for me for the, for the next stages that I'm, that I'm trying to make? happen so you know I'm conscious of uh, uh, right now I'm conscious of keeping my lights and the darks uh, separated as much as I can so here I'm starting to put some of that color of that cube that's being reflected up into the shadow of the urn And uh, like I said, it's it's all about subtlety. You want to make it a subtle those those color choices very subtle. So it might be a good idea to start with the color of the urn shadow and just kind of shift it a little bit towards the green. You know, you're not putting green in there. Needless to say, it's 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 a gray. And this is a gray orange. I'm. I think what I did was I, I used the gray color that I just reinforced that shadow with, and now I'm mixing slightly warmer, slightly cooler, greener, redder to that, and I'm adding it. Now I'm starting to come up to, I believe I'm starting to, well, I'm going to continue with a little bit more of the yellow in the cup there being thrown up into the pot. Now this is yellow from the pansy, because the pansy is also influencing the shadow. And like I said, you can just bounce back and forth from the left to the right just to see what kind of an effect is being, uh, is being shown by adding these reflected colors. So this red here, this pink, is a response to the red cube in in the cup that's the red from the cube being thrown up onto the onto the urn as well doing a little softening of the edges i believe i threw a little pink into that as well so that's a little bit of a pink in their influence into that shadow shape. So now I'm using a little bit of broken color. I'm not really coating that whole area as much as kind of dabbing it in. And I think I may have slowed this down a little bit. So yeah, I mean, if you look from the left to the right, you can really see where I'm going with this, the influence, how, that, how those colors 
and the light influenced those colors in the shadow, especially in that area. A little bit of broken color there. I might be, yeah, okay, I added some color and I might be thinking, oh, that's a little bit, that's a little too hot, so I might have to come back in and and make that a little bit less bold. Because that's, like I said, what this is about is it's being subtle, especially in this stage here. But uh, again, you know, other artists will do this right up front. They'll start their painting with, they'll load their shadows up with these colors. They'll load wherever they think or they see this influenced color, they will paint it. And I certainly, you know, I do that as well. This is, uh, this, like I said, is a, a demonstration for you guys to show you the dramatic differences between a painting that you might think is, well, that's a decent painting, but, you know, if you add these other colors to it, I wanted you to just see at what you know, the next level it takes it to. I like to say that these influencing colors and the addition of these influencing colors, this, this reflected color uh, and light especially, grounds the items in the still life to everything else. They're related now. It starts to relate them in a way that just on the left, they just don't look related. The colors look stark or cut out. And as I add these colors on the right, you can start to see that they become more like they're in the same room or the same space. That's how they feel to me. The other important thing I want to mention is that um, just because this is a still life doesn't mean this is not happening everywhere that you see. Anything that you're looking at, this is happening. Uh, the room you're in right now is influenced by the light that's either coming through your window or on your in your lamp or if you just have your computer screen on. Everything in the room is influenced by that. And everything that has color is actually throwing a colored light off of it onto something else. And this happens in not just in still life, but um, like I said, in landscape in uh, figure, in portraiture, everything. Uh, the other thing I like to uh, say to people is, uh, it's kind of strange to hear, but uh, you kind of have to believe that this is happening before you actually see it. You know, um, years ago, I heard conversations about temperature changes and reflected light, and I would say, Gosh, you know, I just don't even see that. And so I didn't even paint it. And then when I started to ask myself, do I really see it? And I started to take my time and really look for it. I saw it everywhere. It's everywhere. So here I'm just starting to, um, oh, I'm actually <clears throat> working the light areas. And he, I did say just a minute ago that these, color influences this reflected color happens mostly in the shadows. Well, it's probably the most obvious in the shadows, but it's also happening in the light side too, especially where this area that I just painted was, it's called the half tone. And you can see that it's pretty prevalent there. Now I'm just gonna simultaneously soften the shadow and uh, add some influencing color, some reflected color into that as well. So I'm very, being very careful about the colors that I'm choosing to put up there. I'm kind of tackling two birds at one stone with one stone. I'm softening the shadows and adding the color at the same time. And you can start to see just how that vase is starting to look more round and, and full as as compared to what's on the left with the uh, local color block in. It just looks posterized or cut out. So 
So if you guys have any questions, uh, type them in there, and I'll I'll try to answer them as best I can. So as I go along here, um, you know, I become more confident uh, with my choices, and I start to uh, augment or add to the color that I just put down. Um, I'm always reminding myself, though, to stay subtle. You can bring it up to a point where you've gone over the top with it. And if you can bring it back, that's great. But it's best to just sneak up on it and assess it as you go. Just look at it as you go and uh, decide, well, I think that's pretty close. And the way you do that is you just paint these things over and over again. You paint a lot of these things, and you'll know by instinct just where the limits are, where that line is that you can cross and where you can't cross. So I'm softening edges still a little bit and adding a little bit of color to here. I'm adding a little bit of reflected color into the, um, the, the ground plane. This color comes from the white of the vase. It's not necessarily, I would say, a color as much as a slight change in light to dark. That green cube, I will say, also is has a huge influence. It may not be visible in real life as much as you think, but if you look at it closely and you study it, you'll see that the that the cube or any object like that that's in question really has more influence than you might think. And you can see that. Just shift your eyes from left to right again, and you can start to see what I've done by adding that influence of that green. Uh, let's see, Gloria Cronley, I think. Uh, what brush size? What brush and size? What brush and size are you using? This is a the Blick Master Stroke Number Four, I believe it is. So that's Blick Master Stroke Number Four, and uh, I'm glad you asked that question. That's a great question. I have or will have um, uh, links to all the uh, brushes and equipment that I'm using. Uh, some of my favorite stuff and stuff I use to paint this. If you look at the top of the chat window, there is a link, HT, HTTP, it's a uh, bit.ly slash Troy Kilgore at the top. That will take you to uh, some links uh, for my particular um, featured site, which uh, will give you some, um, some ideas on uh, some of the uh, equipment that I use. For this particular brush, I think it's a number four master stroke. It's a it's a um, it's a natural hair brush. Good question. So you can look at this again, and you can start to see I'm you know I'm starting to get a bit more confident about the color I'm putting in as I go. So I'm starting to I'm really starting to come up to that the line that I cannot cross. And uh, it's always a game for me to find out <laughs> where that is. And if I take it over, it's okay. It's not a mistake. It's just, you know, I'm learning it just like everybody else. And uh, sometimes it's kind of fun to take it over and see where it goes. Sometimes you get unexpected results. But like I said, most of the time, this is uh, an exercise in subtlety. It's a, a little bit more restraint. But the, the nice thing about this, I will say, this approach is that you already have your lights and your darks uh, kind of patched in there. You've got your cools and your warms patched in <clears throat> on the, for instance, on the left. They're all ready to go. Um, so, you know, you're not really trying to discover uh, the lights and the shadows as much as just kind of subtly change them. So here I'm working on the cup. <clears throat> Excuse me, had a 
Um, I'm starting to make a little bit more bold color in some areas. Soften the shadows of the half tone. Put a little bit more color back into the half tone. So I'll go back and forth like that until I'm happy with what I got. Looks like I'm starting to cool a little bit on the side there, which uh, if you notice that slightly cooler side of the cup next to the half tone really makes it pop uh, a warm and a cool there next to each other. And I will say that that cool that I put in on the shadow side of that cup is not blue. It's a grayer version of what's on the left side. It's just a slightly grayer version of that. Even in that, I'm trying to be as subtle as I can to be as deliberate as I can, you know, to be as thoughtful as I can with the paint that I'm using. I don't want to introduce more values into this thing especially at this this stage i want to keep that value pattern as strong as i can i'm just working the edges and I'm putting temperature changes in there slight color changes and then uh, if i do anything uh, with values it'll be at the very end but i i probably won't change any of the values but if i have to i'll know how far i can what i can get away with at the very end of the painting so here i'm starting to introduce color into the shadow shape uh, that the, the block is the green block is casting and you can see that there's an influence of that orange that yellow cup into that shadow shape kind of made that a little darker a little bit more pink to pick up some of that and also uh, looks like I'm adding a little bit of value change there but not much it's okay so just a little bit grayer to define that edge playing around with that a little bit it's like i added a little bit of that cup color the influence of the cup on there now i'm going to soften this edge or actually i think what i did for this was i i thought that that handle was a bit too big compared to the handle on the on the right, since I did almost visually make it smaller, the one on the right, I decided I want to keep with proportion. I'm really big on proportion, scale, and perspective. Uh, if the scale of the handle on the left for me isn't correct, I'm going to go ahead and make it smaller so it looks like it's in proportion, in perspective, as it might be. So, yeah, so I'm still uh, adding color, uh, slight reflections of color, different, different subtle changes here and there. Also taking the opportunity to uh, soften the edges. Now I'm going to add, I believe, a little bit of green under here as the leaf is also influencing the color of that shadow and i may actually put a little yellow in there too but yeah so it's like a little bit of green and uh you know honestly i i could either go either way with that shadow i could say it's the green from the leaf or i could say it's the green from the little cube down there either way So just giving a little bit of little change up to this uh, to the foliage in there, the, the leaves, and uh, um, also taking the opportunity to soften some of the edges of the pansy. I think it's plural of pansy is pansies. I I believe I'm not sure, but. So I'm going to come in now and just uh, 
put a little bit of darker touches in there, I think. Just a few, not a lot. Don't need a lot. That's not, that foliage is not the star of the show. It doesn't need, it doesn't need to be brought out or, or, or nuanced. And, and, and by that, what I mean is I'm actually using that green to not just make it more interesting, but like I said, soften the edges of the, of the pansies themselves. So I'm adding a few little, a few color, uh, cool color notes in there too, to give it some depth, like uh, so that to make sure it's not just looking like a, a blob, and and that there's some sort of network of stems and leaves in there. And. Uh, like I said, I, I slowed this down a little bit so we could get to this, so you could see this part a little bit better, but I'm mixing some color right now. And I'm back here with uh, more of this leaf stuff. So I'm adding in just a few touches. Let's see here. Gwen Meyer asks, if you have never painted before, should you try oils right away or start with another type of paint? Well, that's a good question. Um, I started with water media, uh, watercolor, and then I went to acrylics, uh, gouache, and then finally oils. Um, they all have their advantages, disadvantages. Uh, water media such as watercolor, gouache, and acrylic are, they're more manageable. They, uh, you know, they don't have oil in them, so they, they're less likely to get just about everywhere. <laughs> you can wash them out with water for the most part. Uh, the oils, for me, were um, a result of uh, uh, wanting to control what I call dry down in water media. And uh, when water media dries, any kind of water media like watercolor, acrylic gouache, they, they tend to get darker. And since I build my paintings, you know, with relationships of values, uh, I'm really dependent on when I put a value down, I, I'd like for it to stay the, the lightness or darkness that it is when I put it down and not change in, in 15 minutes. Uh, before I'm finished blocking everything in. So that's the advantage of oils. If you're going to start out, you know, I, here's what I would suggest. Just buy a little, a small kit of oils. Uh, you know, a few colors, red, yellow, blue, maybe a couple of earth colors, white. Certainly get some black paint. Black paint is, you know, it's a uh, villainized, but I think it's got some good uses, especially for value studies. And uh, just try it out. Get yourself a little kit. You can uh, Blick sells these uh, uh, prepackaged uh, oil uh, kits. I don't think they have brushes, but I could be wrong. But they do have a variety of uh, paints. And uh, see how you like that. Uh, but you could also. It's just good to be aware of, uh, you know, the the uh, pros and cons of all of them. If you're out traveling, I think maybe you should, maybe you could get gouache. You could get some gouache paints. Those are nice. You just have to be aware that you kind of you kind of have to look for that value changes uh, while you're painting. Uh, Lots of professional artists uh, have figured out a way to deal with it. I just, I just could never, I didn't have the patience for it or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question. Though. So I'm starting to come in now and uh, it looks like I'm adding a little bit of warmth to the bottom. 
of that shadow behind the urn, behind the cloth. It looks like maybe I uh, wanted to change the value back there slightly. It appears a bit warmer, but I'm also, you know, thinking about the the color or the uh, edges of those the handle and the the peony in the back. I'm trying to soft that a little bit, soften it. Darkening the color back there slightly will also cause the peony to go to appear lighter. As you can see on the left, the block in the peony, that color has not changed. It's the background around it that has, it makes it look lighter. So I'm just in here kind of experimenting with what I can get away with on this. Um, I wanted to make the background slightly darker, probably to pop that peony in the back. Uh, peony, it's not a peony, it's a pansy, I'm sorry. Pansy in the background. And then uh, I'm starting to separate that, uh, that background cloth with the, uh, the shadow shape that's it's being cast by it. So it's, you know, it's a little bit of back and forth. There's always going to be that. Uh, but I'm conscious about not adding new color as much as just making the color that's there slightly different. In either, you know, cooler, warmer, lighter, darker. And again, I'll say this again, I... I'm really conscious about not trying to change my value structure too much. If I can, if I can make something look different by changing, if I can separate uh, two objects by just changing their temperature or color slightly, I would prefer to do that than adding a new value, especially uh, in the blocking stage or even during this stage. So I'm just adding a little cooler temperature at the top there. You can see how cool that is compared to the left. And here at the bottom, I'm starting to add a little bit darker color. You've seen me use my finger or thumb to just kind of blend different things. Uh, I'm not, you know, you shouldn't be afraid to just get in there and take your thumb or a palette knife and just kind of fold that paint over. Uh, sometimes if I use a brush, a brush may not fold the paint as much as blend it into each other and cause uh, some graying that I don't want or muddying. So here at the top, I'm, I'm adding the influence of the purple background to the top of that yellow cube, which I just did. A little bit of yellow there in that shadow shape, the peony. And I'm still kind of filling in these shadow shapes with some. OK, so there you go. That's after. That's, that's finished. Uh, so that is end of the stage two. And if you just glance back and forth before and, before and after, whoops, you can see that. Oops. Okay. So that was the end of that. I, I just kind of want to get that back again. I'm going to share that for a second. Uh, hold on a second. Just a second here. All right. So we're going to go back to the video. I'm going to show you this at the end here real quick. Uh, 
I think that's probably close enough. All right, so if you look, let me get my, uh, chat window back up, sorry about that. Okay, so if you look at the, the two paintings again, you can see just how, uh, how lively, how much more life there is in this painting with all of the colors in the shadow shapes than there are in the left side of the painting. So the right side of the painting has a bit more vitality to it, I would say, than the left side of the painting. And um, that is, let me get back, there you go. So there it is again. You can clearly see here just what I've done. If you just glance back and forth, you can see that it really causes everything to be related. So, and I've heard that term before, you're relating things in your painting. And this is really for me what that means. It's relating the colors. I'm relating these things together as if they're in the same space and they're influencing each other with their, with their colors. Um, so with that, uh, if anybody has any other questions, just uh, go ahead and ask them now. If not, we'll just uh, we'll end this session. And it's been great uh, answering your questions. I hope you got something from this. Um, I know that uh, when you start seeing this color, even in your still life setups, you'll start to see it everywhere you go in in real life in everything that you see and uh, if you can see the if you can see these effects in real life you can paint them so i hope everybody has a good night and uh again you can go to my uh click page up there there's a link uh, bitly at troy kilgore or bitly slash forward slash troy kilgore uh, if you want to get more information about uh, other videos I've uploaded to Blick, uh, materials that I use, or um, what's happening in the future. And uh, with that, uh, uh, so <laughs> with that, uh, I guess uh, we'll bid you a good night. Bye.